Hello, and welcome to another Couple with Casey. Yeah. And today we're going to have some fun with some acrylic paint markers, so let's get to it. Okie dokie. So I got these lovely things in the mail recently. They are Archer and Olive Acrylograph paint pens. So they're water-based, acrylic, non-toxic pens with a 7mm tip. And I've been seeing these all over my Instagram because I follow quite a lot of um, bullet journaling people on Instagram. And Archer and Olive do a really nice bullet journal. And they just released these and I was like, you know what? I want to try them. So I bought them and they arrived. So we're going to have a play. Okay, so it's got, oh, it's sweet. So there's a little blending palette. So this side is for mixing them together. Um, okay, so directions for you. Shake with the cap on. Vigorously shake pen up and down before each use. Press, press the pen to begin the blending palette until ink flow begins. So that's what this is for. Clean and store. Gently wipe off the tip with a rag. Firmly replace the cap and store horizontally. Okay, here's one I prepared earlier. Sweet. Tips for acrylic rough pens. Wider tips are for covering a larger surface, such as backgrounds. Fine tips are for great detail work. When layering colours, wait until ink is completely dry before placing more ink on top. Excess ink on tip can be wiped off with a rag. If ink is too transparent or not displaying properly on dark or coloured paper, wipe the tip off, shake the pen several more times, repeat until epic. If tip becomes damaged or clogged, remove damaged tip and replace with clean tip while holding the pen upright. This has got a nice little directions section. And then we've got the pens. Ooh, and it comes with some tips by the looks, some spare tips. That's nice. I've got two in there. Cute. So that's handy. Handy dandy spare tips. They came with, like, each one has a different selection of colours. I got the um, tropical selection. There is one where you can, like a set where you can get all of them, but I liked the colour palette on these because I thought it was nice and bright but not too saturated. So let's have a play, do some swatches. This is a box. Um, yes, it is a box. This is a bulky box, so it's a bit hard to like have it out just because it's got all these pages and stuff. Can you take them out? It's stuck to it. So, that's a little hot difficult when we shake them. Shake, so the shake, first shake, 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 shake. I'm going to say about these pens is they have a really weird nib. Like it's, I was expecting something like Posca pens or it's almost kind of felt-ish or something. I don't know how to explain Posca pens, but it's nothing like Posca pen. I'll try to show you here, but it doesn't really focus on my camera. But they're plastic and they have like slits in them kind of like a dip pen so I guess when you when the ink comes out it sort of stays in the little slits of the plastic so it can hold the ink longer and yeah it's really weird and I don't like it um I don't know if it's because I'm not used to it or what but the texture when drawing with them is really scratchy because obviously it's plastic and if you pump them too hard it as I found with my white one, which was the first one I did, it can bend the little nibs and then you end up with like ones, because there's like, it, the nib has like lots of slips in it, so it's lots of separate little plastic pointy bits. I, I bent one of them on my white ones and now it's sticking out and it scratches the page every time I try and draw with it, which is really annoying. It's kind of like having one of those annoying wooden bits going through the lead of your pencil that you just can't get rid of when you sharpen it and uh, ugh, I hate I hate it it's so annoying but um, other than that they were pleasant to use the colors were nice and um, yeah I have mixed feelings about these pens as I will get into as the video progresses but they weren't what I was expecting and I don't know if my opinion on them is based on the fact that they weren't what I was expecting. 
I struggled a little bit with the blendability. These pens are meant to blend, but I will explain that in just a moment. Okay, so I swatched them all, and they look pretty cool. They had some nice colours here. And I'm going to test them out on some wood. So, as you can see, I went away, I did some sketches, I came back, I drew it on the wood, and I came in with the pens. Now, first issue is <laughs> these pens are supposed to be opaque on um, white toned and black paper. I'm not sure if it's because I was doing it on wood or not, but these were not opaque. Um, the tip said if they're not showing up opaque, wipe off the nib, give it a shake, give it a few more pumps and try again. Um, I did that, but it just it wasn't working for me. It was so frustrating because I was trying to... I, I had in my head that I could make a cute little coaster on this wooden thing and just my pencil was showing through. I figured you know, they're supposed to be opaque, so I don't need to erase the sketch because they're going to be opaque and they're going to cover it up. And my expectations was that of Posca pens, which are very opaque. So I was not expecting the pencil to show through, and it did, especially on the lighter coloured ones. So that was frustrating. But also, you can see here on this little wooden thing, the color of the wood is showing through on the white so I had to do a few layers and even then it's not 100% opaque and it, it was very frustrating to me. The other thing is these pens are supposed to be able to be mixed so you're supposed to like uh, pump it so ink comes out onto the blending page and then pump a second color and then there's a special blending pen which basically is an empty pen it's just the nib it has no ink in it that you mix the two colours together with that pen and then you use that pen to draw with. Now, in theory, it should work, but the problem is the pen, the blending pen, doesn't pick up enough of the ink to use it effectively, if you know what I mean. Like, if you're only doing very small details with the mixed colour, it's not an issue, but if, like me, you're trying to draw this picture where you want a, not necessarily this isn't exactly a, particularly a large image, but you, it's a, got more surface area than say a, a word or a tiny piece of writing in your bullet journal. And so it was very hard to cover any surface area with the mixed colour. So that's, that's something I had an issue with. Then obviously the lack of opaqueness. Now these were supposed to be opaque, like it says, it, it's one of the selling points and it, uh, frustrates me to no end that it wasn't opaque but I, I put it down to could be that I was doing it on a bit of wood that wasn't primed it you know so the maybe the ink was soaking into the wood more than it was sitting on top so it wasn't being opaque I, I don't know that's what I thought <laughs> maybe so like I had fun with these pens but I think I could have gotten a better result if I had used Posca pens um, for this little coaster-like thing that I did here. Um, and again, I didn't really like the nibs, the, the plastic nibs, I don't know, I just didn't like it. It felt fragile almost, not like it was going to snap, but like it was going to bend if I put too much pressure on it and then, you know, I wouldn't be able to get the right effect with it anymore. And I mean, I guess you're supposed to be able to get the paint, ink, whatever, out without actually having to put pressure on the nib itself when you're drawing with it, but you have to pump it first to get the ink to come out. And I feel like if I'm pumping it, then it's going to bend the plastic. And because I did that with the white one, I was really scared of doing it with any of the others. And that made it hard for me to get a decent amount of paint onto the nib for every other bit and oh it's just it was more difficult to do this artwork than it needed to be it could have been much easier if I wasn't so paranoid of bending the plastic I guess because um, you know I did I bought these out of my own money and they weren't cheap and the postage was not cheap and I had to wait several weeks for them because of this whole COVID mess so I was just I didn't want to mess any of them up 
like I had with that first white one and I like I showed at the beginning I did get two spare nibs so I can replace the white one and that's not an issue but I didn't want to have it happen to every single pen and then you know have a bunch of messed up pens I did like the colors the color selection was lovely I would have liked maybe a brown or a darker gray or maybe a purple would have been nice but I suppose you probably get those in the other selections um, I think it it might have been nicer I could have gone with one less sort of tealy green because there's, there's two tealy greens in this set there's a dark one and a light one kind of like a, a mint and a teal I probably could have gone with you know not having the mint one and then having a purple because a purple would have been nice I, I've kept finding myself wanting a purple and not having one and they they are supposed to be mixable but I explained my struggle with that not only did I find it hard to get the paint to get onto the blending pen to get onto the drawing but also actually mixing the colors to get the color I wanted was very difficult I wanted to try and make a skin tone out of the pink the yellow and the white and I just couldn't get anywhere other than a dark orange. I could not get any lighter, no matter how much white I put in there, it just wouldn't change. And it was so frustrating. So I do another image later on in the video where I attempted a skin tone. And she just looks like she's got fake tan on because it's just orange. <laughs> there is no skin tone there. And even that... Um, a, a brown would have been nice. I could have used a brown as a skin tone, but no, we didn't have a brown. So that again is, you know, not really an issue because I chose this color selection. So I could have gone with their natural toned selection. I think there's a the nature one that's kind of like browns and creams and stuff. I don't actually know. I just know I like this one better, so I went with this one. But Again, these pens aren't necessarily meant for artwork, they're meant for bullet journaling and doing details in your bullet journal, so a skin tone isn't necessary in that regard, I guess. So, I mean, I think if I was to use them in my bullet journal, they would be great. Like, the little leaf details you can get, and they look very nice doing very simple design work and again I did choose the thinner nib as well and there is a thicker nib um, which may be better for the kind of stuff that I'm doing here but I, I wanted to be able to get that nice detail and I want to use them in my bullet journal later on so I didn't want to have the thick ones so here we move on to I was attempting to try it on paper to see if there's any difference in the opacity of the markers so you can see the little um, original Casey there on the left with the skin that looks just <laughs> so fake tan um, yeah there's no darker colour to do she, she's got a lot of black on her and there was no black at the selection so I, <laughs> I may have made an error in choosing her for my test character so I went a few pages back into my book and used Tobias the little original character that I made in my live streams recently he had a lot of the colors from this um, pack in his design so I thought that would be great so I used him and instead of trying to do a skin tone I just left the skin white I did not attempt to even mix anything with this picture this is just the straight colors I just wanted to see if I could get an effective illustration with just the base colors of the pens and it doesn't turn out too bad I like it I think I need a sort of a simpler style for it to work for me um, thinking you know Casey Golden sort of style I'll link her below she's epic and Casey if you watch my videos which I highly doubt but if you ever do <laughs> you should try out these pens they'd be great for you um, yes so Tobias has pale pink hair. There isn't a pale pink in this and I didn't want to mix anything. So he just ended up with the raspberry pink hair like his sister. So there's that minor detail change, but you know, it's not that big a deal. Um, I did struggle with filling in the large area. I, I, I may have drawn him a bit big. <laughs> 
um, knowing that I had the smaller nibbed pens I should have gone smaller but I kind of didn't want to I wanted a full page illustration so hey ho my own fault it just took me twice as long to color because with this to fill any area you have to do very very small little circles or um, back and forth strokes with these pens because otherwise the ink just doesn't come out the paint or whatever it is it just doesn't come out this I struggled with the yellow so much I had to keep going back and pumping it because it kept running dry almost like I said the the nibs are almost like a dip pen where it's got this the slits in it and the ink kind of sits in the in the slits until there's no ink left in them and you have to pump it again for more ink it's not like a constantly flowing thing like other paint markers so there was that um, which was frustrating especially when so much of this image was solid color um, if I had done a smaller picture it might have worked a lot better but I did not do a smaller picture I did a big picture because I am a glutton for punishment <laughs> but we got there in the end I just had to be extremely patient and I shoved on a YouTube video and just colored and yeah got here in the end and I wanted to try um, layering to see how opaque they were on top of each other as well I did it a little bit in the mushroom coaster uh, I don't know if you noticed but there was some red going on top of white and some gray going on top of white and I did other colors on top of other colors and they these pens I give them credit are very opaque on top of each other but on top of the backgrounds like the paper and the wood I found that they weren't very opaque at all for example this picture which I thought being on paper might be better for the pens than being on the wood I thought it was the wood that was making it difficult for the pens to be opaque but again with these sketches my pencil lines were showing straight through even on the darker colors um, so I guess you know opacity ranking is what maybe a three out of five they do great on top of themselves but on top of the pen uh, on top of the paper on over the top of my pencil lines not great so I'm gonna have to keep that in mind if I use them in my bullet journal because I pencil out a lot of my designs first and if I did this over the top of the pencil not only would I be able to not erase the pencil but I would be able to see all my sketchy lines straight through and that would not be good so Pro tip, if you have these, erase your pencil first, or at least make it lighter so you can um, not have this issue, I guess. Um, yeah, so we went back to the hair. I jumped around a bit because I realised how long it was going to take to colour, so I didn't want to just sit there colouring one section the whole time. So I started with the hair, and then I went to the jump, and then went back to the hair, and I found colouring the hair in like sections was a lot better than trying to colour it all as a great big lump because you can see very clearly on the yellow it's very streaky because of having to colour it in like little circles and little back and forth scratches it wasn't blending together nicely because by the time I got back to the next section the se first section was dry so it wasn't blending smoothly so it's very scratchy and gross so do not use these pens for large areas unless you have the thicker nib. I don't know if that's any better, but I'm assuming it would be because you can cover more surface area quicker, so less chance for the pen to dry before you get back to it kind of thing. Like with paints or um, copy markers, really. Um, and I didn't know what colour to do Tobias's um, glasses because on the image I did for the live stream I just used my pencil colour which was a dark purple and there wasn't a purple in this pack so I just decided to use the dark blue colour as the liner and for his glasses in this because it was a really nice colour and I wanted to and it was the darkest colour in the set so <laughs> that's pretty much it I used it to line everything and it didn't it doesn't look too bad I don't think I mean it would have looked nicer with the purple because it would have tied more in with the color scheme itself but it's not bad by any means and it is a really lovely blue and I think this is actually the only one of all the colors in the set that actually 
was opaque over the top of my pencil but it could be because my pencil is a dark purple so it blended easier with the blue than any of the other colours I guess maybe I don't know possibly who knows the secrets of the magic box <laughs> Um, I made sure to add his happy little calculator on his jumper and then just some extra little details and he's completely finished. So the pens are good, not great. For bullet journaling they'll probably be a lot better than for artwork. I found writing the names and signing it right here was very nice. Um, it looked good as opposed to the scratchiness of the images themselves and the colour selection was good though could use maybe a purple brown or a skin tone in this set it's up to you if you like that kind of thing um, like, subscribe, comment below and I'll see you all next week bye